Ladies and gentlemen, for the final time this semester, hello and welcome to Overtime, presented by TV2 Sports. I'm your host, Timmy Carlisle, joined by Maddox Miller. Josh Aponte's in the back today, but we got Ryan Shanko out here and Matt Corrale. Ladies and gentlemen, the NFL draft started last night, and I would love everyone's thoughts on how the first round went. Let's go around, starting with Ryan. Oh, boy. Um... I thought it was it was wild. It was nothing like what we expected. A lot of records were broken with different positions being taken a lot more commonly than we usually see. But I thought that that's what makes the draft so great. Mm -hmm. It was like you can have all this build up and all these predictions, but at the end of the day, what actually happens is probably not what you thought was going to happen. So I I I was very entertained. I had a great time. Uh, watching things shake out yesterday. And for me, I think a really interesting thing about the draft is that there are winners and there are losers. And I feel like the big winner for me was the Chicago Bears. Okay. Because they ended up getting Caleb Williams, and at nine, yeah. they ended up grabbing Roma Dunze, the wide receiver from Washington. Big that is going to be a day. deadly mm -hmm. duo. At least that's what they're hoping for in Chicago. Yeah. And they got just that. And that is really something to be interesting going in and watching this NFL season. Without a doubt. Maddox, what do you think over there, Michigan guy? I uh, thought Detroit did a great job. How about you? Yeah, no. Um, Detroit had a good pick. Uh, the Tehran Arnold pick I was very happy with. I just meant hosting the draft. Oh, overall, yeah, no, I was awesome. Uh, 200, 275,000 people showed record out. Setting record day, setting folks. day for the wow. city. Uh, so that was really big for them. Mm -hmm. um, Most attended night one. And then, Man. you know, McCarthy went. Tenth to the Vikings. I think I, I agree with what you said, Ryan, where you kind of all these experts are like, yeah, we know what's going to happen based off of like this is and this, and they throw all their mocks together, and then one pick happens, and they all just go straight out the window. And all of a sudden you're like, well, I guess anyone can go anywhere, really. <laughs> uh, the offensive, like, 14 straight offensive picks was just yeah, like that, insane. That's something I've never seen before. Yeah. yeah. That was yeah. pretty crazy. A couple of records broken. We had a tie for the number of quarterbacks taken, yeah. tie for the number of receivers taken, and a tie for the number of tackles uh, taken in the first round. There was that record broken for 14 straight offensive mm -hmm. players. Six. And then it was the most attended draft night one out mm -hmm. in Detroit. Yeah, six mm -hmm. quarterbacks in the top 15. That's nuts, wow. too. Um, yeah, I, six. The, the one, of the, one of those picks that, that stands out, it's kind of like the elephant in the room in terms of draft talk. It's the Penix going to eight. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, what let's it, talk about it. We need, yep. I, we need to talk about it because um, I think it's pretty clear that that move makes no sense for Atlanta. Well, I like what Matt said about those winners and losers. And I like you took it and think it makes no sense. But I take a look at it and I think, what happened to drafting a quarterback to sit on the bench for a couple years behind an established veteran, teach him the game, and then put him in? Uh, now, I know financially it might not make sense, but like as uh, a scheme-wise, that's not what a, you're supposed to do with your quarterback. It's not a financial thing. Penix is already 24. Okay. Yeah, yeah it's, that, guy's, that okay. guy was looking to start on a team. Okay. That's the one it's, thing. It's that, and you took him at eight. Like, I mean, <laughs> like he was there. The GM said if he's there, yeah, we'll no, take the, him. he was there. But Ryan, the same, you're a Packers fan. You should know about taking a quarterback. He didn't go. He didn't go at Jordan Love didn't bench. go at eight. Jordan Love, okay, Jordan Love okay. went late in the first we round. Far. We got him at 26, and the Packers didn't draft far. The Falcons did. Yeah, Falc So, the problem is. You sign Kirk Cousins. You sign Darnell Mooney. You bring all these guys You're in. Making moves to contend. To win now. They had a prime opportunity to take a marquee defensive player because that defense needs some assistance. Yeah. They need help on their line. They need help in the linebacker <coughs> room. They need help in the secondary. And instead of addressing a need that could catapult them to the top of their division, they took a quarterback who will not play for at least three years. Okay, yeah. so now I want to counter that point with... Back a couple years ago, the San Francisco Giants got graded as an A in their draft, but it was for all the wrong reasons. All of their early picks fluttered out, and their best player ended up being Mr. Irrelevant. And that oh, the 49ers. Oh, 49 49 49 49 49 49 I say the Giants. <laughs> you're, you're thinking baseball. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> baseball, baseball, baseball. My apologies. Uh, my apologies. 40, flag okay, on the play. 49ers, 49ers, 49ers. 49ers. <laughs> 49ers. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. So the 49ers had Mr. – that's why you were looking so confused. Yeah. 49ers – when they had Mr. Lavelle, nobody saw him being the best pick in that draft for the 49ers. Well, and that's what, what, would, up being. what would your reaction have been if they took Brock Purdy at eight? Yeah. 
it, it's a lot different than taking Michael Penix Jr., who and just played the national championship. Brock Purdy's actually like he actually is. Brock like, Purdy couldn't play. even die at one no, college. He, no, Brock Purdy played. That's the thing. That's fair. The 49ers didn't just go and spend 180 million dollars right. on a quarterback that offseason. Yeah. Like there's there's a reason we still kind of look at the Trey Lance pick and are like. Wow, the 49ers are lucky that Brock Purdy panned out because like yeah. they invested, they tr- traded all this stock to go <clears throat> so up to many three first round picks. Yeah. Uh, and get Trey Lance, and then you know it's not really his fault because like injuries, and then it turns out Brock Purdy is like a quality starter, so then yeah. he just kind of gets pushed to the side. But the 49ers quarterback situation was Jimmy Garoppolo, like at like at the time, Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance. That's way different than Kirk Cousins, and I get it, Kirk Cousins. The concerns are he's in his 30s coming off sure. of a, a injury. injury. Right. But, and I, I know <laughs> this is very incomparable, but, like, you could have taken, like, Spencer Rattler in the second if you wanted to Not draft the, the guy. Second, but, like, like I know the third, mean, Like, a yeah. late, you just, third or Penix fourth, at yeah. eight, because, like you said, they could have taken defense. They could have even went and, like, they could have, yeah, they could. They could have gotten taken, Rome. They could have taken a Dunze. They could have gotten Rome, and, just, and then yeah, you have, you have Drake London, more. Kyle Pitts, Bijan Robinson, uh, Darnell Mooney, Adunze. and Odunze, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, Kirk Cousins has a lot of weapons. These NFC South like defenses DB, can't, you defenses can't, can't keep up. But instead, they took a player that won't play until he's 27 at least. If any, yeah, if anything, unless we well, see an injury, which yeah, obviously okay. we don't want to see. That's facts. If anything, it, it, and this is crazy, but like if you were going to take a quarterback at that spot, you might as well have gone with McCarthy. Yeah, because at least McCarthy's only 21. Yeah. And if he sits for three years, he'll Who be the cares? same age Jordan Love was when he got, because that's the thing with Love. When we, when the Packers picked Love, he was 21, 22, and when he started for the first time last year, he's only 25. If the same thing happens with Penix, he'll be 28 when he starts the first time. Yeah. And at point. that point, I just think what's the, the last point? season we truly saw the value in a backup quarterback throughout the league. Yeah, but you don't take a backup at eight. eight. <laughs> yeah, that's the one you just, thing. You can't. You can't, you can't. Ju- you can't. I, I can't rationally justify the pick. I think it's the worst first round pick I've seen in a long when, time. In my opinion, when, you draft, when you're drafting top 10, top 15, or mm-hmm. even in the first round, you are drafting for a player that can immediately come onto the field and make an impact. Mm-hmm. And the Falcons basically got a guy that might play like one or two games this year if right. like Cousins is banged up for a week or sure. if the Falcons have like clinched a playoff spot. Yeah. But other than that, he's like a preseason quarterback. And Unless, that's it. That's not what I was trying want, to, um, It's either that or like say Kirk Cousins, which I really don't think would happen, but I, and I really can't think of a situation where this has happened. You grab a guy that's been paying a lot of money and he just comes out and stinks up the joint in that's September, true. October. He, he, abso- he absolutely back. could just come back from that Achilles injury and it's just Struggle? not the same Kirk Cousins. And, like, we could see, like, was he kind of a product of, like, Min- not a product, but, like, did a relationship no. with him in Minnesota. He doesn't have Justin Jefferson to throw to anymore, but he does have, like, young weapons. So they He didn't really downgrade all too much by going to Atlanta. No, yeah, no. I love the weapons they have down Yeah. There. They just have yeah. to use them, which right. without Arthur yeah. Smith. Like Ar- Arthur Smith, hopefully they got, do that. He liked to use his best players as disguises almost on offense. We got to get more John I, I Smith think, targets. I think we Raheem Morris is Raheem Morris is gonna showcase the guys that are like their top line guys. Mm-hmm. So I, I I don't think Cousins is gonna struggle. I mean, we might see some rust coming off of Achilles tear, but sure. Being worried about your franchise guy not looking the same is not an excuse to to panic and take yep. his replacement. Right. Mm-hmm. How are you guys feeling going into the weekend? Any names you'd <laughs> like to see still on the board? Yeah. Um, yeah, this is all. I thought Cooper DeGene not going in the first round was interesting, but mm-hmm. the fact that he didn't go kind of makes sense when you look at it because there were so many offensive players that were taken. There just wasn't enough spots for it, yeah, defensive guys it, to come off the board. Uh, I think he's going to be a premier second-round pick. I think we could see him go in the first five. Mm-hmm. We'll probably see him go first five second-round picks. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Adonai Mitchell, uh, the wide receiver from Texas. He He's a freak. He's an athletic monster. Um, and I, I think he's the better receiver out of all those receivers taken from in the Texas. first round, and there's still great ones left. Yeah, it's That's a deep, yeah. it's a deep class. It's a really deep <coughs> class. Excuse me. Uh, you Troy, think he was the better receiver. I think Texas? he's the better receiver when you look at route running, 
contested catchability, obviously speed. Like Worthy's the yeah. fastest player in NFL history. But mm-hmm. I was gonna, I was gonna say Worthy kind of got like a. I don't want to compare him to this because his NFL career did not pan out very well. He kind of got the John Ross stop yeah. jump, where it's sure. just like, ooh, fast forty time. Gotta, there is gotta get this guy. Football speed and track, track speed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Like those guys. A lot of the guys that run great forties, they're trained by like track coaches to learn how to yeah. run the forty. Mm-hmm. That doesn't like the speed will translate, but the number the f- yeah like you don't run the forty with pads. The four two one no. we won't see that on the field, no. and obviously yeah. like he's gonna get his shots to run vertical routes, and he'll he'll get some deep balls, but he's not physical. Going and to the Chiefs, I was gonna say he did. He did go believe the Bills like sold the bag. No, I wanted to talk. I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about that. Yeah, uh, Bills have. No one to throw to right now. Like, yeah, it's like, Sh- like Shakir, Khalil Shakir, and, and um, and uh, who's the who's the tight end? Who's the tight end they have? Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. Yeah. They traded out of the first round to get two extra picks. Yeah, third and a fifth. And both of the picks they traded out of were wide receivers that they absolutely could have taken. It, <laughs> they traded to the team that they just can't beat in the playoffs. Yeah, I don't <laughs> yeah. Like, like that's a good the slap team, in the face the, to the team, fans. the team that has kept Josh Allen from competing for a Super Bowl ring. Once we know for sure, and if maybe if they could have beaten them the other few years they met in the divisional round, like who knows what would have happened. But it's it felt like an in division trade, which just made right. no sense to me. Yeah, like to the guy that broke the record for the forty time going to the Chiefs. Pat Mahomes. I know. Uh, like if this dude can catch, they might be onto something. Even if he can't catch, Mahomes will throw it into his pants. Yeah. He yeah. won't even have to catch it. The ball will just land there. Yep. I I think. Like it's I, unbelievable, really. The individual like trades are not as like, in my opinion, like as serious as they uh, were in like prior years. But we still see it. Like the Lions uh, jumped the Green Bay Packers, uh, and I definitely think that was kind of a like yeah. we want to do this um, to get ahead of Green Bay. Um, so trading, I think they just wanted to make sure that they got they got Terry on Arnold. But so trading the Packers were trading to the anyway. Chiefs. And then having them take a position that you, that you need yeah. is so crazy to me. And just, I, I see it, that, in my opinion, is like a losing move but by it, the Buffalo Bills. But at the same time, we, 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 were just, we were just talking about how deep the receiver class is. That's true. But I did see, so there's, I did see, because the Bills have the first pick in the second round, I saw rumors that they're also trying to trade out of that pick. I wouldn't be shocked. At this I mean, point, why not? Just keep, just keep so going back. At this back. point, just stack assets, I guess. I'm not sure why, but uh, that, if they want to trade out of it, I mean, they're, they're, they're the pro football team. I guess they have a vision for what they want to do. But if I was Josh Allen, I'd kind of be shaking my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was exciting bit. to see how everything goes in the second round, guys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, it'll be a great second round tonight. This class, overall, every position group, it's so deep. There are so many guys still on the board that could have been first-round picks. It's going to be exciting. Well, the NFL is always king. (laughs) We love to talk about it. So coming up on overtime, we'll take a look around the land and see how the Guardians and Cavs are doing. We'll talk about that. All right, we're back, and we're going to talk about some Cleveland Guardians and Cleveland Cavaliers. Gentlemen. Let's get it started. How we feeling? Let's start Cavs playoffs. Got blown out in game three, ready to bounce back for game four. How are you guys feeling going into game four? I feel, I feel interest. It's weird because, like, you, you take a look at games one and two. Cleveland pretty much had complete control. And then you go into game three, and everything just seemed to go out the window. Yep. So now you kind of go into game four being like, okay, how are we going to kind of calm down? If you're J.B. Bickerstaff and the coaching staff, you got to be like, well, I don't know really what happened in game three where we just kind of fell apart and lost by 40. So how are we going to try and just go back to our brand of basketball? So it's going to be interesting to see how they do that in game four because the home teams in these playoffs have been really, really well. They are way above 500 yeah. in the record. So is home floor king this NBA postseason? Who knows? But will it be king in this series? Well, that's for these two teams to decide, and especially on the side of Cleveland. The, the, yeah. the home team has won each of these three games, so it's going to be a matter of who's going to take it. And I feel like if Cleveland takes game four, it's going to be Cavs and I five. mean, in eight 
took a, a home game from a one in Miami over Boston. That's so right. Mm -hmm. Anything yeah. is possible. Denver like, we should be able to take a, a five seed home game yep. being the four seed. Uh, uh, as a like observer of the Magic Cavs series, who's not like a fan of either either side, to me it felt like in the first two games the Cavs were motivated. They were energized. They rode the crowd pretty hard, and they took advantage of the Magic's inexperience. I know a lot has been made of a few teams in the playoffs being young and inexperienced, but the Magic looked shell-shocked out there. First two games, yeah. their shots weren't falling. Uh, the chemistry was off. And when they went home, I think they kind of got that burst from the crowd. But at the same time, it kind of feels like Cleveland went up 2-0 and took their foot way off the gas. Yeah. It was yeah. like they went into Orlando and expected to expected to win. Yep. And whatever game plan that they had um, for that game three, it's got to go. They need to completely retool their defense. They need to retool what sets they run. They need to try to get better shots. They need to try to get Mitchell going early. So hear me out on this analogy, fellas. To me, yeah. it's almost like a professional boxing match or an MMA fight, okay? okay. Best of seven, so it's not a five-round championship match. But we definitely took the first two rounds, and then we came out and just dropped a dud in the third round. So we're going into this fourth round here, up 2-1, right? We're, that's clearly where we're at in the series. Mm -hmm. And in, in baseball, sometimes it's not about who scores first, it's about who scores second, who responds to that second run. Now, in this series, they have the momentum. How do we respond coming into game four? All season long, we've seen which Cavs team is going to show up. If the right team shows up, I, I'm not even worried. But if they come back home 2-2, I'm eyeing that panic button up like I was a few weeks back. And it's not like those I agree. two. That's, I really agree with that. And it's not yeah. like those two versions are like, oh, one's pretty good, but one's pretty bad. But it's like, ah, you know, if you get one or the other, it's not going to rock your world. It's either really good <laughs> yeah. or it's really bad. Yeah. So it's, and it's drastic in terms of the gap between the two. So you need to find that magic. I feel like you need to rely on your stars find again. That find that magic. magic. Find oh, that magic yeah. in Orlando, oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> you need to rely on your stars and just kind of go back to plain simple. And you realize that, like, like, some, like Ryan said earlier, they left their foot off the gas in game three. I totally agree. You gotta get your foot back on the pedal now. You gotta go full speed, take it to them. And like I mentioned earlier, if we if the Cavs take Game Four, it'll be it'll be a wrap in five at home. Before we jump over into baseball, Maddox, yeah. what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, there can be no looking ahead. There can be no we're looking to the next series. We're looking oh, at Boston. We're looking at Miami. You gotta no. focus on each game. I think. I wouldn't even look ahead past a game. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like good. You, uh, Not even, forget series. Game yeah, again, <laughs> neutral neutral observer. Yes. Um, I think what happened was, like, we saw bad Cavs basketball, but also good Magic basketball. Yes. It's not. It wasn't just, oh, the Cavs suck and the Magic are, like, okay. It was, no, like, Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner are bawling out of their yeah. minds Dello right now. Paolo had 31 right? and 14. Yeah. So the Magic three. hadn't been, like, shooting well in games one and game two. <laughs> it was, uh, like, historically bad. Yeah, they were really bad. And so... When you combine bad Cavs basketball with good Magic basketball, that's obviously going to be a Magic win. Right. One, one thing I noticed is in Game I Three. Like that in that's Game Three, <laughs> Gary Harris took. He only played twenty minutes. Yeah. And he took way less shots. Yeah, because he was like over like seven in Game One, which yeah, is just he, unacceptable. Gary Harris had been taking a lot of shots, and he'd been playing a lot of minutes. I don't think that only seeing him play twenty-one minutes as a starter is an accident. I think the Magic, the Magic. They came home, they're like, guys, let's make some adjustments. Adjustments. Let's expose the weaknesses of this Cavs team. Let's get them running around on the perimeter. It worked. It worked yeah. very well. And, and then they got, like, bench production as well, yeah. which helped a lot. Uh, first home playoff game since 2019 for the Orlando Magic. So I mm -hmm. think that also went into it was just the Magic where, like, we have to win in front of our home crowd. We cannot go out there. Because yeah. the last time they won a sweat. playoff game – was uh, in was 2019 it, against, against the Raptors. On the road. Actually. DJ Augustine, game winner. Yeah, I remember. Um, crazy, mm -hmm. crazy so crazy like, times. and that was on the road too. They didn't. Win yeah, because it was the, it was series. it was game one. Uh -huh. Um, so 
the Magic are playing with house money and are kind of just like, yeah, we are they're, here. They're so young. This Cavs yeah. team has so much ex- like expectations, and we are going to ruin their day. Yeah. Um, if they take game four and they head back to Cleveland with all the momentum, it is tough times for the Cavs. Be, like, I, I like, like four, Timmy, I'm like saying. you said, yes, like you said, I'd be eyeing the panic button if it goes it. back to Cleveland 2-2. Not, yeah. not pressing Especially it if it was like game three. But it, look, we got to understand something. Obviously, we heard it here. We're not disrespecting this Magic team at all. They're in the no. playoffs for a reason. This is a very talented young yep. squad. I mean, they were I had the five seed. Exactly. I had them winning, they they had them winning the series. Like, what, yes. one game below you guys in this team? Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. they did. Yeah. Yeah. Not disrespecting Orlando at all. It's just the fact that this is a young team. Not a whole lot of expectations. Obviously, you haven't made the playoffs in about five years. This is a Cleveland squad that has had a really good regular season, fell off towards the end. Mm-hmm. So now you really have these expectations of like, all right, these guys need to win. And Orlando is doing that right now. And a the pressure is on the Cavs right now to try and respond in Orlando. Which is so crazy because we'll the Magic can continue that. It's crazy because they're up two one the series, and somehow the pressure is on Cleveland. I yep. think this series really <laughs> comes. Yeah. It well, comes almost yeah. like the New York Philly matchup. I still feel like the pressure is on the Knicks. I I can agree and that's with a that. Two one uh, series as well. I think this series is coming down to, and this might be the same thing for New York and Philly and other playoff series, is, is like, who can get a road win? Who can go on the road yeah. and pick up a win? Because if Orlando takes this game, then we s- clearly see that home court is king for this series. Yeah. And it's who can steal that home court advantage for just one game, and that will so win them the series. let me ask you this. Say it goes 2-2. Two, two. Does the series go seven with the fact that these two teams are I mean winning it, all the time? It just might. Like there, I see no, I see no reason for it not. It, it really, this game four is pretty pivotal because yes. the difference between three one and two two say, is insane. To your point, and I before we, I think we should jump into Guardians. Yeah, we can. Yes. We can hop this is going to be my closing point here. If the Magic come in, they win the game at home and it's two two, and then they come into Cleveland and steal game five and go up three two, it's over in six. The Cavs okay. it will might. not respond, and I'm putting this out there on the air. The Cavs go down 3-2 into Orlando. So there is no chance that J.B. Bickerstaff rallies this team to a win. Yeah. You can count J.B. goodbye. You can count yep. this Cavs season done if we do not go up yep. and 3-2 ourselves. One more, one more point <laughs> is uh, I think we can stop talking about young teams being unable to perform in the playoffs. I agree. Now. Yes, it's he's a Thunder fan. <laughs> he's he's yeah. tired of this. Uh, he is so tired of that narrative. Frankly, we've seen Orlando win a playoff game now. The Thunder are up two nothing. Minnesota's up two nothing. We've all of crazy these crazy NBA young, playoffs, boys. These we got young some Cleveland teams, baseball, yeah. they can yeah. play. Let's jump into it. The Cleveland Guardians had an amazing April, going eight and four at home. I was at every single game for at least an inning, taking in all the magic this season. How are you guys feeling going into May? I mean, it's a good start. It's a great start, obviously. I mean, but, you know, it's, it's yes, still sir. April. Yeah, we yes, got to so 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 remember. The Rays yes. last year yes, started sir. Yeah. 15 yep. and And they ended up, I think, they, losing in the wild card series. They bounced in two, two in the wild to card. Texas. So it's just a matter of. It's a, ra- it's a marathon. Not yeah, a can you keep it and going? that's why it's on the side of our jerseys. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsored by Marathon. <laughs> the fuel in the American <laughs> spirit. <laughs> Always. Okay. That's baseball. It is a marathon, not a, not sprint. a sprint. You are right. <laughs> yeah. The team that the Guardians were tied with in terms of all time Cleveland baseball records to this point. They finished at eighty one and eighty one. Okay. So that, that team exactly that had right. that great start finished five hundred. We are not trying to play that. We are trying to go out under Bogey Bear, our new leader, and we are going to take the division. But yeah, definitely encouraging, but obviously job's not finished. So a lot of still work to be done. Out the corner of Carnegie on Ontario. Yes, sir. This Braves series is gonna tell. It's gonna tell a lot yeah. about the Guardians team if because the Guardians we got 16 straight games. Guardians days on Thursday, May take 15. a few Whoa. against the Braves, and you can kind of feel way more confident yeah. about how for real this team is. Because because yeah. Guardians have played the A's twice, the Red Sox twice. The White Sox, who are the now worst. Don't say the A's twice because the A's beat the say. Yankees the twice. Are, okay, yeah, so the, the A's, A's are, are a decent. Legit team. Everybody that was talking about, oh, we're going to fade the A's every single game, bet against the A's. I haven't heard them <laughs> but talk like, much after the first couple weeks of the season. But, but like the only team, the only team that they've played that is above 500, if I'm correct on my records, is the Yankees. Who? Um, the A's? No, the Guardians. The Guardians oh, okay, team, okay, the okay. only and team that they've Cleveland played, won only one game in that series. They won one game in that series because for some reason. 
and I'm a Guardians fan, but like for some reason, Guardians fans have this weird notion of like we own the Yankees and like rock no. the baby, oh, even though not. even no. though like the Yankees won the series. It's I don't weird. Know about all that. I know, oh. I know that the us might not have that, but I see it on the <laughs> internet a lot, and it's really weird. But besides that, Brave series, real contender. It's a lot of hate. It's a fascinating. Series. If you can, if you can. This is our first time in the swept. new ballpark. The Guardians have not been to the Braves' new ballpark. This is our first time out there. Really interesting. Yep. interesting. Wow. Yeah. And exciting. especially on the road too. Yeah. Yeah. Because Cleveland last year had the Braves at Progressive over Fourth of July weekend, and I believe we got swept, or the Guardians got swept. Excuse me. Packed house. But. Regardless, it's going to be a matter of, okay, can Cleveland kind of keep going with the mm -hmm. momentum that they've had against a really good Braves team, and especially against a guy like Ronald Acuna Jr., who had one of the greatest seasons in history? They brought Ozzy so Albies off in 10 day DL, too. Mm. And, uh, They're doing whatever they can to stop us out there. Ozuna, in Atlanta. Ozuna from the Braves. Um, Ozuna from the Braves. Yeah. Ozuna from the Braves. Ozuna from the Braves. Um, he's on there as well. It's they're a scary team. Like they've always been scary. Uh, the they've been yeah, I've been scary for the past like five years now, mm -hmm. and it's just like yeah. if you can just avoid getting swept, if you can somehow steal a two-one series win, that'd Man. be amazing. Because the rest. Of the next only series we've lost this season was to the Yankees. Was to the Yankees, and I'm still putting in. So now this is where Maddox's point comes in because I don't want to say that we own the Yankees. There no. is a lot of hatred there. I'm still going to put yeah. an asterisk on that game. I was there, standing on the corner, and I and even from my angle, the pitch looked inside to Florial, and the hump rung him up and said, "Strike three, you're going to." The well, that's know. a difference between first and second, one out, and two two outs. Runner on first. Well, let's Different th game. Well, let's think about this now. You know, talking about, okay, what if the Guardians get swept? Is really that big of a deal? Because here's the deal, fellas. Like you mentioned, we've only lost one series. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The goal for pretty much every team trying to break up a 162-game year is to win the series. That's, we that's could play 500 ball from here so on out and finish with 85 wins. As I think long that as you central. try and have that expectation of, okay, let's just win the series. And if they do so after the Braves series yeah. and they get swept, not the end of the world. But right now... If they s kind of start to fall off, we'll be like, okay, let's pump the Yeah, because they have – Don't forget, after the three in Atlanta, they got a day off, and then they go right to Houston for three more. I was going to say, so yeah. it, it, like, you have – Welcome you've, to May, Because it's like you've Houston coming up, you've Detroit coming up. Uh, Detroit's been good. Yeah, have, and that's a big yeah. division, like They're in division right series. Kansas City. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I will say is Guardians fans – especially me, like, we are riding a high right now. The Guardians are yeah. playing really good ball with a new manager and a super young team, and we're like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, there hasn't been a lot of moments where we've kind of gotten, like, our teeth kicked in, and we can be like, oh, dang, like, we are going to lose series. We aren't Boston shut us out twice. Boston did it. Boston did shut us out. But, like, we well, have We still took again, five out of seven against them this season. So. Yeah. And so it's like, if they get swept by the Braves, I think it's <laughs> – it's it'll suck because that's three straight losses. But at the sure. same time, you can kind of be like, well, it's gonna happen. Like the Guardians aren't gonna right. steal a game from the Yankees every time. They aren't gonna win every series. Yeah. So that's just kind of my so my the, input. The on way it. I see it as a neutral observer, it's kind of it, it feels like put up or shut up time when they go and play these good teams. Because like you guys have been saying, you can beat sub 500 teams yep. all the live long day, but at the end of it. That doesn't really matter if you can't compete when you need to compete if you actually think you're one of the best teams in baseball. So it's it's all the same thing we've been talking about. We're going to learn a lot about the Guardians uh, when they head down to Hotlanta. Hotlanta. Um, well said. Yeah. yeah. And we'll Absolutely. learn a lot about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, boys, for the final time, producer Gabe has cooked up some Cleveland athletes, and we'll try to guess after this. All right, boys, it's time to guess some players based on their career path. Here's player one. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Well, wide receiver for the Browns like for two years from 11 to 13, and then no. the Bengals in 2014. He's a wide <laughs> out. all. <laughs> Andrew Hawkins. <laughs> yeah. Was, Dude, was, wait, no there idea. was a guy in 18. Um, oh, oh, really shoot. short Taylor, guy. Taylor. Oh, far. Taylor Gabriel. Taylor Gabriel. No, he played for the Falcons. Did he really? Yeah. Nobody guesses Hawk. Yeah, because he broke Malcolm Butler's ankles in the Super Bowl. Did he really? Yeah, I, I remember. I recorded that on, s like, early Snapchat usage. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my. Uh, sending it to everybody. OMG, Taylor Gabriel just put Malcolm Butler on skates. <laughs> <laughs> so all This guy. Remember. But could that be, Surely the Falcons could that won be that Andrew game. Hawkins? I think it is, bro. I have no idea. They didn't win it? They were up 28 I think you're yeah, right, actually, right. I think it is Hawk. We're going with Andrew Hawkins. 
Oh, Greg, Greg Little. Little. Dude, I had tickets in 2012, season tickets for the Browns. That guy could not catch Who a cold. Who is that? He could not catch a cold. That was a running joke that. with my dad. I did not know that he went on to play he for the Bengals, though. I've, I've never heard, heard of him before. Don't know that know that a rough is. 2014 year. Was, All right, here's player two. Oh, my Whoa. goodness. MLB first baseman catcher in DH. He oh, dude, this is Santana. First baseman. Yeah. 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 He yeah, played everything. Because he's, he's, he's a current Two twin. Okay. I have no we idea. We got that one. A little Slam Tana. Slam Tana. That was my favorite player. Yeah. yeah. yeah was a lot of in 2010. Nice. Nice. Good job, Matt. Good pull. Good pull. Thank barely you. Thank spoke you. Any English. Appreciate it. Absolutely. All right. Player three. Oh, here we go. Catcher. MLB catcher with the... Yon Gomes. And then... Oh, I got oh, this one. It's Yon Gomes. Yon Gomes. We are frankly... Who is that? Going two for three. Yon Gomes? We're kind of lost. Catcher. I've never heard of this. I know who Yon Gomes well, you know, is. We we have a catcher got, I knew that uh, Yon Gomes was a Canadian. When you got a catcher for what? We got him from the Blue Jays, eh? He was a hoser. All right. Give me player four. Play four. Defensive We're back in the NFL. Oh, gosh. Browns from 8 to 14. And then the Seahawks, Falcons, and Broncos. Uh, Derek Wolf. <laughs> chup, chup. What? Dude, oh, the only shit. Browns tackle that mattered from 08 to 14 is Joe Thomas. Well, so def anyway, defensive tackle. Defensive, it's a defensive tackle. Oh, I can't it's read. Where are my glasses at? I don't have them. But defensive I need tackle. them today. He was playing for um, a while. He was in 11. Oh, snap. Uh, Browns. Uh, is this a Taba Rubin? <laughs> there it is! Let's go. Let's go, baby! Let's go! Come on! Oh. 70 yes. wins! Oh, Who? Three out of four. That's, that's our best oh. record to date. Uh, well, it's a... Uh, Give yeah, me some. It's, Boys. It's, oh. Boys. Cool. I contributed nothing. Oh, okay. Dude, that's... Oh, we, oh, we got another going. one. Raiders. One Brown, 2012 on the DN. Then he went is, this to Arizona. is this... Is this Chandler, Chandler Jones? Jones? No, 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 no. He wasn't... A, I don't think... Oh, wait. Was well, he was on the Cardinals. Was he a Brown? I don't know. But right, he was, well, he was a Raider. In like no, that wasn't 2018. Was that was 2022. Yeah, I was gonna say 2012 he, on the Browns. He was a defensive. 2018. Uh, a lot of games back then. Then he went to Arizona. Oh, Marcus shoot. Golden. No, no, was, that's too odd. Yeah, I have oh, no man. idea who the I, Browns defense then was in 2012. For one year. Only one. Man, Arizona, Arizona Cardinals for four years. Um, uh, I don't know. Who was opposite JJ Watt? That was a Brown. JJ Watt. I feel like Jamal Shad had like Jamal wasn't his name. a Cardinal like, in 2017. Was here for more than a year. He was still a Texan. Oh, oh you're right. Oh, I think it was a tackle too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think I'm. I don't know. Stumped. I don't know this one. Yeah, I got nothing. We got stumped. <laughs> Frosty <laughs> Rucker. I don't know who that is. Let's go, uh, producer Gabe. You got us name. again. I don't know who that is. Okay, so we were a little too excited. We got one right. more. Oh, right, one more. Yes. Okay. Total. Okay. okay. Running back. Snap. 2009 okay. with the St. Louis Is Rams. this? Okay. Oh, I can. Oh, no. Okay. Is this Orleans Darqua? No. Dude, that's a Wait, crazy who? name to say. Is it Chris Obanaya? There's Chris Wait, Obanaya. Why not just. There's Obanaya, we got. Oh! <laughs> yes! Matt is. Obanaya! On one today. Matt, Matt is on saving one us, bro. Bro, yeah, tw man. early that's 2010s. Awesome. Cleveland Browns football is my. Favorite era for whatever reason. Let's so go. So, I'm so I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe it's just <laughs> maybe it's just good memories of growing up and getting into the game. But that was oh, uh, that's, that's rough. Awesome. Those are those are names that dude. Bring, oh I God, childhood. That's, let's that's, go. That's great. Boys. I was so cooked the entire time. <laughs> Me too. Matt, you should have been on every episode. This last <laughs> yeah, week. because there was always there was always better. there were always Cleveland yeah. guys oh, and it's what like a day. I think everything else I, I don't know Cleveland. I don't know Cleveland yeah, I don't know yeah. Cleveland guys. I know like I needed one of those. So I know a couple here and there. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> fine. That was nice. There were so many Lions this year and I got like none of them. You got the one twice. <laughs> Yeah, I got Aldrick Rojas twice, and I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> guess him both times. Aldrick Rojas in there again. Man. Well, and then, and then they had Mohamed Sanu last time, and I went through an entire list because he was like, <laughs> he, he was a Bengal, he was a Falcon, and he was a um, known quarterback. He was, a, he was a Patriot, Two and I was ones. like, yeah. and I was like, when I think of Lions. Bengals, Marvin Harris or Marvin Jones. When I think of uh, Falcons, yeah. When yeah. I think of Falcons, Lions, Desmond Trufant, and when I think Desmond of Trufant. 
when I think of Patriots, uh, uh, yeah, Patriots lines, I think of Trey Flowers, and so I'm like, I was so cooked. I just can't believe going back to like the open eyes. I can't believe that's that a he crazy was out of pick for two years and then went back to the Texans. That's a crazy. <laughs> that's You're like, yeah, you oh, actually, no, uh, come back. Uh, <laughs> I was like, huh? Hey, please. <laughs> it was like, uh, what are we doing? We had that one MLB player who played for the Tigers, and he had like a four year. He played for like two years for the Tigers. This kicker chat. If I could uh, get Gabe Calora to come on out here to send oh. us send us on home for hey. this final. TV2 Come Sports on, Show. Let's go. It'd be yeah, very dude. much appreciated. This may take a minute. Yeah, I, will, I will hand you my mic, but uh, you can uh, continue your thoughts. Sorry, go yeah. ahead. Hey! Yes, sir. Hey! Hey, yes, sir. Bring it on home. Oh, it, was, it was fun doing this. Uh, this, is, this is my last show that I have put together uh, ever for TV2. So... I hope you guys enjoyed the really niche players. Um, yeah, I, those were That's those great. were my brainchild all semester long. So let's go. Love I this. still so, yeah. I still remember getting cooked on where did he go to college. Yes, that was oh, miserable. Was that, was that was miserable. Yeah. <laughs> all right, well, that was fun, though. for the final time, thank you so much for watching. I've been Tim Carlisle, Gabe Kalura, Matt Caroli, Ryan Shanko, Maddox Miller, and have a great day, everybody. Take care. Woo hoo hoo!